Okay, um... This is another deck. Uh, I tried to focus this one more around Roland. Um, as you can see, we've diversified our threats pretty heavily here as well. And this is just to play around turn to seed because we're definitely playing like a, a big, thick, bomb, like, fatty deck. And there's so many good options that having them spread out like this uh, actually gives us a lot of variety and helps protect us against cards that, uh, you know, wipe out all of one unit in your deck. And it gives us a lot of angles to attack with, and pretty fun to play, too. Um, our Edgar Claimer, we're playing four. Uh, this is the only Minotaur we're running other than Tavrod, but it definitely earns its slot. We're playing quite a few weapons. We have Gnawblade and Ageworn Vistage. And between those two, we'll typically have one in the void at some point. And by the time we have six power. And interestingly, Reclaimer will look at the relics with the highest attack and the highest um, shield. So if we've got a Null Blade and an Age Ward Vistage in the board, I believe we'll end up with a 5 9 weapon, which is pretty cool. Um, Fun little combo there. Um, for our merchants, we're playing three Hidden Roads, two Carindons. Uh The Carindons can't get Harsh Roll or Martyr's Chains. And that might be a problem, but being able to get Tomb and Edict is usually enough. Um, Aramont Mind Splinter. This guy's just got five Toughness, which means he doesn't die to Jack. Uh, it's got Deadly, so it'll trade with anything, and can actually gain you some life too in racing scenarios so all around just a decent mid-range threat uh purge driver you saw it in the other deck but here um it's just a unit that hopefully kills one of their units and that's pretty solid um having a body and killing something else is really all he needs to do and sometimes he'll kill two things Two, two stones with one bird, as they say. Uh, Roland. Yeah, we talked about Roland, but this guy, Decay, is amazing. Endurance is amazing. He's got five toughness, so he passes the Jack test, or at least until they decide to nerf Jack, which will hopefully be soon. Uh, when an enemy unit dies, make a 1-1 one -one flyer with Deadly. So, let's say... You play him and you kill a few things and you get a, a, f a bunch of flyers with deadly and then now if they're trying to like attack in those flyers with deadly will trade and maybe roll into block something and then you'll make more <laughs> and it's just kind of an army in a can and can really stabilize the game hard against certain decks um you definitely want to keep them alive as long as you can Vara, um don't really need to talk much about her but since we're focusing on removal being able to strip ages is huge and sometimes she's just a really big threat Mokdo, uh we're playing one here just because this guy's prone to <laughs> prone to a lot of abuse he'll get turned to seated or whatever and if we're only playing one then we don't really mind Kazboo, uh we just need some card draw and him and Tavrod are kind of our card draw engines, and him having Ward is, or I'm sorry, Warp is pretty great too. Uh, there's also some scenarios where you can give him Lifesteal too, and the damage just is a non-issue, but we play quite a bit of ways to gain life. Some slowly and some quickly, so it's usually not a problem, and we really like the card draw. Elaz, uh... There's not a lot of matchups where this is bad. Uh, I guess if someone's playing like a token strategy, this can really bite you in the butt. But uh, he's a 3-5 once again, so he'll pass the Jek test. And being able to trigger mastery, well, that's pretty good. So if you trigger his mastery, you might just win on the spot. So he kind of earns his slot. Uh, in that regard, 
and having unblockable is also pretty cool. Um, if your opponent's playing like a big thick monsters deck, this card uh, can definitely help you stabilize against them as well. Ikaria, she needs no introduction. She's warping the meadow right now alongside Jack. Uh, but being able to kill a unit on sight or sight and slam down and be a huge threat on her own, while also being able to just rip all your opponent's removal out of their hand is crazy. Um, we kind of actually have skewed some of our removal towards minions and uh, attachments because then we don't lose them to Ikaria because she's just played a lot right now. But uh, we have one Vanquish displayed. This card's good. Uh, usually I'd play more in this kind of deck, but we'll jump, we'll skip around here. Uh, we're playing Gnaw Blade, and this is just a really solid weapon um, against control decks. It applies a lot of pressure pretty early, and they might not have any removal that actually deals with it. So if you get that down, you can get like 10 to 15 points of free damage, and you know, you're also playing minions they might take a turn to harsh roll you then that's another free five damage and then you can clear out whatever they play and just keep smacking them for five so you hit someone with this five times and they're dead so a uh, solid card here and it um being able to shrink everything in the void is sometimes super relevant um there's times against uh, fine decks where I've slammed Null Blade on four, cleared one of their like one four birds out of the way or whatever, and then they start trying to do the discard thing, but uh, Felrock actually won't come back into play if Null Blade's in play. So that's cool, and that can really slow them down. Uh, jumping back up here, Master's Blade, plus one plus one for each skill. Uh, Play Fall Short, kill an enemy unit with a battle skills. There's quite a few of these, uh, but you never really know what you're going to go against. So sometimes this is just a dead card, and other times, you know, like on Mokto, it'll give it plus two. Or on Aramod, that's plus two. Um, so there's quite a few cards that uh, kind of get buffed twice in our deck. Um, if somehow you're ever in magical Christmas land, and you've got a Pale Rider's timepiece on something, this will almost immediately trigger it as invoke, and, you know, you get the invoke, the extra card for free, which can be cool, but we're primarily just playing this as a weapon that sometimes kill things, and can also increase your clock a little bit, which can be cool. Uh, Age Worn Vistage, talked about this before. Um, but because of uh, how controlling our deck can be, we can certainly get to the point where we're spellcrafting this, but it's also just a ton of toughness, so we don't really mind turn six just jamming this card and, uh, you know, maybe killing a minion and then having it die. Just like a big health buffer there. And then... Uh, if you shifted it out again, that's another 9 health gain. So, while this card isn't, you know, the end-all be-all, it definitely serves a, it serves its niche quite well here. Uh, we kind of talked about timepiece, um, but this can kill Ikaria, this can kill the mysterious 5-drop uh, fine guy that pumps his board, the champion. Um, and can also just be used to, uh, give something flying and fly over, so very versatile card. I have yet to spellcraft it in this deck, but I imagine if you're being super flooded, there's not a lot else you want other than this. Uh, we are running in the spell slots with Aramod's design. We are playing no two drops other than Reclaimer, and... He's kind of a six drop anyway, and his job is to bring back relic weapons and not really <laughs> be a body. Uh, sometimes we play him as a body, but this is really the only card that gets hit by it. Even the uh, jumping around here, but even the Silver Blade Palette Reapers, they're three drops. So, Aramot's design's just a 
free way to uh, get a lot of win percentage against aggro decks. Uh, Lost Scroll, Vara's Favor, just some ramp here. Um, our power costs are pretty heavy. Uh, since we're base black, wanting 4 Justice for Roland and wanting 6 Shadow for Ikaria, uh, these cards do the heavy lifting there. Uh, cast into Shadow, this is just kind of a must-have for our Kellers. we we'll probably play more, but sometimes some decks are playing like zero single faction units, and sometimes they're playing all of the single faction units. We've, we've kind of got our removal spread out here pretty nicely, just so uh, we have chances to draw into whatever we need. Uh, in the market, we've got Edict. This card, just one power, kill something, can be great. Uh, Corrupt. Um, this is for the mill deck. Uh, if they're playing that... Uh, I always forget the name of cards unless I'm like looking at them. But uh, against the mill deck, we want to... Uh, what's the name of the card? It's like Sabotage or something. Let's pull it up real quick. I suppose I should have... Oh, Solitude. There we go. Uh, I just added it to the deck. But uh, we can use this to stop them from just one-shotting us with Solitude. And there's that other spell that makes dragons as well, and that can counter that. Uh, it, it has its niche role. We're also playing a lot of, like, really powerful threats. So having Corrupt and Regent's Tomb to kind of stop removal is pretty key, because if we can keep even one threat on the board, that's all it takes to win a game. Harsh roll. This is harsh roll, you know. You play it, you wipe the board, and hopefully you don't die afterwards. Martyr's Chains, it's just one of the ultimate top ends. Uh, you could replace this with something else, but there's not really a whole lot that's as efficient as this card. Doubling your units, killing theirs, uh, it, it does a lot of the things you'd want to do. If you were going to replace it, I would run the, uh, the Black Sight instead. But... Yeah, that is the deck. Uh, let's go ahead and play some games. Yeah, those hands were close, but uh, no ramp, no power. We can't keep those. Uh, we have to hit four power, or we're really in trouble. So we uh, we definitely mulligan for at least the three power hand or two power hand with some sort of ramp or a Vara's favor. This hand actually ends up pretty pretty good, even though we're a turn behind here. Uh, we get to jump back ahead with this and then uh yeah just pretty decent We're going to play Tazbu first. He's just a bigger threat.
Definitely take Rowan. Starting to, uh... Our opponent missed, like, one or two land drops, but... I usually don't feel too bad when they're playing an aggro deck that's greedy on power and miss land. It's kind of... The price you pay of playing aggro. We're gonna save our seat for the market. Our power really doesn't go that much be above six. Ah, here it is. The smallest grain of sand can sting. We'll start attacking here. We'll play the tap to land as well. This way, if we uh, draw market and for whatever reason we need to harsh roll, we can. We are chilling. I'll just keep attacking here. Think you can escape me? Brendan Tan. Just gonna wait. He's in for a bad time if he tries to trade with us, so we'll just keep attacking. Yeah, they get silenced immediately, unfortunately. This guy will get silenced, too. But, uh... That's kind of okay. Not great, but... There's a good hit there. Yeah, I think we're gonna go for, uh... Chains here. Oh. Maybe not. That's right, it's not a justice card. Um We could kill his uh Nar here. I think that's all we're gonna do. Oh, that made him leave. Cool. Got the win there. Yeah, the other reason we're not playing the 2-3 uh, Flyer Merchant is uh, even though Maybe it would be better. Is just having deadly is nice when you're playing Roland. So that's why we're doing that. I 
and you'll miss it. Touch of shadow. Yeah, we'd uh definitely more on board with slowing him down than speeding ourselves up here. Hopefully, uh, we can cleanly, cleanly play an all blade here. You Ooh. Seek an audience. Looking like that's a negative. Um. We'll play this guy because we need the body. Oh, that's fantastic. My duty is fulfilled. Make sure we hit the uh, fourth justice for Roland. Or we'll attack here. We're just going to start attacking here. So I'm on a four turn clock, but basically I don't think he's playing that much removal. And that'll be really hard for him to race. I don't see any point in just Wasting my null blade here. We'll wait and see if he plays something else. Cool. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> that card you can just use it to just win a race, like on the bat. All right. Ends all right. Keeps us very alive against aggro. And, uh... We have the market, too. So we're just playing Reclaimer here. Because there's a good chance he just kills it anyway. Before we get a chance to designs. And... Like... We don't really need to like save for max value. In that scenario though, where it just kills his stuff, we are uh, we're quite pleased with that that outcome there. Only the best for you. Yeah, we will block here. Reporting in. Enemy sighted. I love that they made this change. We'll let him hit us a bit here. Oh wow. 
actually, uh, looking quite nice for us. Still not going to attack. I'd rather just sit here. We'll attack now. It'll get the job done, guaranteed. There's an interesting wording on that card that says you or one of your units. I made it so that we can't counter it. Yeah, we'll bottom that. We'll just sit here. We want to hit our sixth land, so we can play Outlaws. So I don't mind trading, trading away here. And we also want to hold up Corrupt. He's probably playing some sort of removal. Yeah. Now we get to do this. That's just so good for us. I probably just like lost the game for him on the spot. This is a cool scenario with that loss, where uh, we get to upgrade our team. I suppose I was still supposed to block close, but. We've got this pretty locked up here. Eloz is just so good. Yep, taking that one home. Keep this. One time power. Uh, we'll bury that for now. Maybe that was a mistake. Never leave home without a good blade. Never really know what it means though when all they play is one time sigil. That was definitely a uh, hand that wants to draw its power. I guess we didn't get punished for it too badly. We'll uh We'll take the free card. We'll go ahead and do this now. Does set us behind on power though, which sucks, but... I don't know if we can let that deck... Draw two cards a turn. But 
I think it was worth the decimate. If we get lucky and he plays two drops too, we'll be able to hopefully live long enough. Get some action going. Yeah, if we survive one more turn, we'll hopefully be able to turn this around. I say survive, but he doesn't have anything on the board, which is... We are totally just going to kill that. I'm liking his deck though, honestly. He's got all this card draw. Very cool. One of the downsides of a lot of the card draw in time though is, aside from uh, Rodov's burden, a lot of it, uh, a lot of it exposes you. I'm actually gonna play Alaz first here. Reason being, I don't know how much removal he's playing. And if we start working our way towards uh, his mastery, that's just good for us. And uh, there's better things for us to kill than Sandstorm Titan. Even if we do pump his guy, like, doesn't really matter. Yeah, if we can hit him three times, triggers mastery, and we can get get a nice threat out of his deck. Uh, I think we will go ahead and Akaria here, though. We'll hold the power for Merchant. Man, Akaria is just so good. There's so many... Because you can run 12 dual power lands and, you know, one or two ramp spells, her costing six sigils is just, like, hardly... hardly even a, a downside. Um, yeah, we'll play this. Give a guy revenge. Always kind of a free roll, even if they clear your stuff out of the way, you get to, uh, do it again. Oh, that's scary. We'll get this guy going.
Yeah, if we kill Sandstorm Titan, that's bad for us. And uh, cutting him off of 10 power saves us from getting bumped every turn in the air. At least before we get our big old lifesteal boy. Looking like I may need to include Burgalize though. We'll figure out what we want to cut for that after this. Probably Martyr's Chains. This is a little spicy here. Take these trades. Hopefully, he has something good in his deck for us to steal. Well, we don't get to find out. <laughs> That's a shame. I was kind of excited to trigger that. All right, uh, let's pick what we're cutting for a burglar eyes. Corrupt has been actually decent, so we'll do chains. And, uh, Actually, been a few times where I wanted pristine light over harsh roll. It's actually been most of the time, and it's actually pretty good with Roland. So we'll try that out. Uh, this hand's a little slow. If we had any untapped land, I would have kept it. This is much better. Now, uh, we've got a good old turn. We'll have a Karia coming down, hopefully. I'm actually going to keep that. We want to just slam Tavrod when we can. We'll go for the Shadow Sigil for the first one. Just so we can uh, potentially warp in Tazbu when it's time. Well, it's time. We're probably going to win or lose the game based on him having removal for this or not. Yeah, we'll play that removal here. Gives us a body. Nice, we hit there. That's actually a really excellent... Master's Blade's one of the best cards for us to pump with him. 
It all but uh, guarantees you triggering the mastery on it. This is spicy. Yeah, we're just gonna chill. To play anything here, we'll just wait. <laughs> Uh, we'll we'll spread out our threats here. This should make him concede, though. I like Vanquisher's Blade a little more here. Um, I guess Cleansing Rain. If he doesn't kill stuff on his turn, this just a kill. Yeah, and we got him here. A nice 20 damage attack coming in. 